what I think of Garrett G's recent form. Garrett's been, he's been awesome. A lot of people are really confused. I didn't have Garrett in my top five for NA recently, but um, I mean, it's just extremely competitive at the moment. He's uh, between six and 10. I haven't really thought about it, but for me, Garrett's between six and 10. What do I think of the iRicky hype? iRicky's legit. iRicky's I super good. Very mechanical, very smart. If he, uh, you know, keeps grinding and has a good attitude, he'll go far. Smug was your favorite time watching esports ever? That's uh, awesome to hear, man. Why does it feel like 2v2 isn't as respected as 1v1 and 3v3? Um, well, I mean, 3v3 is obviously in a league of its own because of RLCS. But um, apart from Universal Open, nobody really ever gave 2v2 a shot. I don't, I don't know why. Like, this is just, okay, th this is just me. The other people might disagree, but I think it would be much more interesting if tournament organizers, especially community tournament organizers, would try and break the mold a bit more with the tournaments that they run. Because I feel like every community tournament or every TO are just trying to do 3v3 events. They're all just trying to do vanilla 3v3 events and they're always going to look like nothing compared to RLCS because RLCS is getting bigger and bigger and all the 3v3 community events are kind of just staying the same. I think that if community tournaments and community TOs want to make a name for themselves, they have to break the mold. They have to do 2v2, they have to do crew battles, they have to do 1v1. They have to change it up. You can't just do the same tournaments. Everybody just does the same tournament. Here's a 3v3 tournament. It's group stage in a single elim. Here's a threes tournament. It's double elim. And I'm like, I've seen that before. <laughs> like, I want to see TOs do something different. And I understand TOs want all the big teams to play in their tournaments so they can get views. They're thinking, this is how we're going to get views. We're going to get the NRGs of this world. We're going to get the vitalities of this world, the dignitases to play in our tournament and that's why people are going to watch but i think that's kind of a flawed formula i think you just got to make your tournament actually good content and then maybe people will watch don't worry too much about who's going to play and i also i mean maybe i shouldn't say this maybe i should keep this to myself but i'm going to say it. i don't really care um i think a pretty cool way to make 2v2 work in the current rocket league esports world would be to do 2v2 crew battles. Um, I'm sure this has been thought of before, so I'm perfectly happy vocalizing it, even though maybe I could do it myself. I just want somebody to do it. I just want to make an example of how easy it is to do other formats other than 3v3. Um, so a 2v2 crew battle is a best of five where you take 3v3 teams. So let's just say, let's just say NRG versus Space Station Gaming just so you guys know all the players. It's Arsenal Typical Rattles against Garrett Justin Squishy. But you're thinking, hold on, Johnny. You said 2v2, and then you said three players for each team. How does that work? Well, let me tell you. Every combination of two players from each team needs to win a game. So it's 2v2, best of five. Game one, NRG and Space Station both send out a 2v2 team. They can send out any two players from their team Maybe Space Station send out Arsenal Typical. Maybe NRG send out Garrett Justin. Then those two, those guys play one game and the winner, the winning team, that's them. They've checked off that combo. So let's say Arsenal Typical win. That's the Arsenal Typical win checked off. Space Station Gaming are a third of the way there to winning the series. Then in game two, Maybe NRG change it up. They still need to get a win with Garrett Justin because Garrett Justin lost, but they can try a different combination first. Maybe they bring Squishy in. Maybe Garrett's not feeling it, so they do Squishy Justin. And then, of course, Space Station have to change their team because they already have the typical Arsenal win. So maybe they switch it to typical Rettles. Maybe Space Station win again. So the Space Station only have one combo left. It's Arsenal Rettles. Then Arsenal Rettles just have to win one game, um, but NRG have to win... Three games in a row with every different 2v2 combo. Squishy Justin, Squishy Garrett, Garrett Justin. That would be sick. Where does Musty fit into this? True, true. It would be a, I don't know how it would work as substitutes. I don't know how it would work as subs. I haven't really thought that far. But yeah, this is how you make 2v2 events work for current RLCS teams. So you still have a chance to get the big names to join your tournament. 
all the 3v3 teams can join and they can be a 3v3 team. You don't have to ditch one of your players and play 2v2 without him. You still get to be a three-player team in a 2v2 event. I mean, you could do the same thing for 1v1, but I don't think it would work because a lot of 3v3 players are just complete garbage tier at 1v1, so they would get clapped and it wouldn't be fun for them, and they would also just be too salty in the first place to even try. Um, it would be great. There would be like there would be enough salt content on Twitter to last us a decade, but they wouldn't play in the first place. They would just not play. But 2v2, I think every pro, pretty much every pro plays 2v2. Every very high level pro, uh, pro plays 2v2 to some high, to, to a very high level. Maybe not to the absolute highest level, but they definitely play to a very, very high level in 2v2. Every two, every 3v3 player is amazing in twos. And if they're not, they're just not very they're not a very good player. Because I've seen every every two every threes player plays twos on stream and they're all good. They're all very, very good. So they'd be able to play, they'd be able to be fun. They'd be able to have fun, I mean. So there you go. That's your 2v2 format made especially for 3v3 you're welcome Rocket League community ETOs um, my donation button is down below no but seriously lots of other people have had this idea it's not that hard to think of ways to integrate 3v3 teams into different formats it just doesn't get done very often uh, I just wanted to give that one as, as an example any 1v1 list? No, not going to do that. Any 1v1 is a total mess because all the best players keep retiring because they're afraid they're going to lose. Um, Caprom, oh, I already said thank you, dude, but thank you either way, again, for the 4-month prime. Every pro says twos is garbage. Um, they probably mean twos ranked is garbage, and they're probably right. Twos ranked is nothing like how twos tournaments would be played competitive 2v2 looks way different from twos ranked because players actually they don't just go completely all in for completely pointless uh like offensive plays anymore in ranked a lot of high level players and a lot of high level teams just kind of yolo for everything they just go go for every single ball they don't care if you put it in a tournament setting, that wouldn't happen anywhere near as much. It would be a lot more fun. So yeah, twos ranked. Pros might not like twos ranked, but they, I think they would definitely, for the most part, enjoy twos tournaments. I didn't hear a single pro complaining about the 2v2 element of fusion. I didn't hear a single pro complaining about the 2v2s. I only heard them complaining about 1v1 because they were lo losing kickoff goals and getting air double bumped, and then they were going to Twitter and being salty about it. It was good content. I appreciated those tweets, personally. Um, I thought they were very fun to read. You cannot gain anything from twos anymore, Squishy. Well, first of all, I don't know if Squishy actually said that. So I want to open with that. I don't know if that's a real quote. However, if Squishy did say that, he's completely wrong or he's talking nonsense. I don't know if he's wrong or just talking nonsense. Maybe he's just salty that he lost a twos game of stream. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if that's a real quote. Um, but if it is... It's completely wrong. Why is one such a struggle for so many RLCS players despite them being good at twos? Because in 1v1, you don't have a teammate. <laughs> yeah, Ogvorbis. Don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's more or less likely to be true. Like That's so ridiculous. It's the kind of thing that anyone could actually say on stream just as a meme. Anything you can get from twos can be gotten better from threes or ones. Again, completely false. Incorrect. Do we have any other totally false statements that Twitch chat would like to share right now? This is false statements anonymous. Well, it's actually not anonymous. Well, it is It is to some degree because we can see your Twitch name, but we can't. We don't know your actual name. So it's in some way false statements anonymous with Twitch chat providing the content. Do we have any other inaccurate statements that anyone would like to share with us? I was watching Squishy's viewing party for Fusion. And he kept saying the twos is boring. Again, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if he said that. Interesting that he was doing a viewing party for my tournament, though, on my stream. Don't remember him asking permission about that. Hmm. Maybe I should copy strike his Twitch channel. Jokes! I'm kidding. Not going to do that. That's a joke. I did publicly say many times during Fusion that anyone could do a viewing party. I don't mind about people transforming my content. In fact, I encourage it. I think it's good for the community. Why are Middle, Middle East and Asian teams not of RLCS? I don't know. I'm not really the person who makes those decisions or 
uh, gets told about specifics. But I can tell you that the from my own observation, the Middle East and the Asian regions of Rocket League developed a lot later than OCE and South America did when it comes to tournaments. OCE from the very, very early days were running their own tournaments. They were running their own pro scene. And the same thing for South America. They kind of just like established themselves and it looked like it was extremely easy for RLCS to incorporate them. They were just like, oh, hey, look at this cool tournament. Let's just make that the play-in for RLCS. And from what I can see right now, there is no tournament like that in Asia or Middle East. The closest that I can see is the Asian Pro League, which is awesome, by the way. You should all watch and support the Asian Pro League. Really cool to see that happening. And I'm a big... Uh, fan of Middle East and Asia being included in RLCS in the future but I also can see a lot of ways that it would be difficult to do that it would be a lot of work legally and logistically to include these regions when the infrastructure doesn't appear to be there yet and I say yet because I, I hope and I think it will be there in the future uh, Swampy thanks to the 21 month tier one I really appreciate that Will Fusion 2 be a thing one day? I would love to do Fusion 2. I had so much fun doing Fusion. I would love to do that. Um, but Fusion was really in Civic's idea. And he is the one who really made it possible. In Civic and Psionics are the people to thank for Fusion. I was simply the broadcaster who was honored to be able to bring you guys that tournament. And yeah, once once it all got approved and everything, I helped a lot with logistics, but Incivic and uh, Psionics made the groundwork for that. If I had as few competitive games in one tournament to guess number four, not entirely true. If we were to recap Fahad's um, history of 1v1 recently, he missed out on Salt Mine 2 top eight by one series. He lost to Revzy. If he'd beaten Revzy in that series, he would have been top eight Salt Mine 2. So, you know, pretty close there. He won Goldmine. <clears throat> and then he lost to Khaled and Smug. So actually, he's been pretty active. Played in the last three big 1v1 events. Smug, Saltmine 2, Goldmine. And I mean, you, you can compare him to Revzy pretty well because Fahad knocked Revzy out of Goldmine. Revzy knocked Fahad out of Saltmine 2. The difference is, after knocking... Uh, Revzy after knocking Fahad out of Saltmine 2 Revzy got top 6 after knocking Re uh, Revzy out of Goldmine Fahad went on and won the thing so clearly he's a, a bit ahead of Revzy in the rankings for that reason he also beat Fairy Peak and Azrael on his way to winning that tournament so I've got him ahead of those two as well uh, but yeah he's behind Khaled because he lost him who do I think is the highest potential in 1v1 um, that's tough I mean, probably Jari is, because he's the most mechanical on this list. Jari is and Astral are the most mechanical players in this list. Maybe Trex as well. Um, but Jari is, I think, is the, the most complete set of mechanical abilities here. Uh, wouldn't 25-27 be peak like in traditional sports? Well, not really, because uh, eSports, you don't have the physical restraints that can kind of keep you back from being a really really good player like in a lot of sports a lot of sports you really need to build yourself physically before you can be your absolute best um so yeah you're kind of limited the other thing is that real sports uh compared to esports have limits to how much you can practice like actually hardcore practicing the muscle memory for like kicking a ball, for example, you get limited by your cardiovascular ability, you get limited by your muscular endurance, you get limited by injuries, like all of this takes longer to build up the muscle memory because you actually just can't spend as long in one day practicing the, uh, the thing, practicing the game. Whereas in an eSport, you can grind so many more hours the muscle memory to compete. Uh, so yeah. It's the fact that there's no physical uh, limitations. Well, there's less physical limitations. Obviously, there are physical limitations, but they're just significantly less. That's, for me, why esports, uh, you're able to get really good very quick. The thing about Rocket League as well that makes it more unique than other esports is that there was never an esport before it that was like it, unless you consider SARP an esport, which I don't think anybody would. 
Um, so there's almost no transferable skill at all. Whenever a new shooter comes out, all the players who are the absolute best in some other shooters that are similar to it will probably be very good at that game very fast and they'll have an advantage, a massive advantage. I mean, Sark Vets did have an advantage for a while in Rocket League. Um, but I think that the fact that scene was so uh, small and the games were so different limited even the transferability of that skill. Or those skills, I should say. Yeah, conditions for outdoor sports as well, limiting factor. There's a lot of limiting factors for sports, physically and environmentally. Am I just a commentator for Rocket League? That is correct. I only commentate Rocket League. Yeah, if you're not playing a real sport since you're super, super young, you're never going to make it in it, probably. I mean, there are exceptions to that rule. Some, some like, athletes are, are really, really... Uh, just made for a game, so you can't actually have some people who, yeah, I think didn't Michael Phelps only learn to swim when he was like a late teenager and then he won how many gold medals? Although I think swimming medals in the Olympics were kind of silly because so many of the swimming events were so similar that the same people would just win all of them. Wait, he learned to swim when he was eight? Oh, maybe it wasn't him. Oh wait, no, 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 it was, uh, it was an Australian guy. What was the Australian swimmer who didn't learn to swim until he was like 16? Ah, I remember it was, a sw it was an Australian swimmer. Somebody might know that you won eight medals. I think it was an Australian swimmer. Maybe it was Mike Phelps. I don't know. It was a, there was a swimmer, you know, an Olympic class swimmer who didn't learn to swim until he was quite a bit older. What do you think about Musty joining NRG as a sub of the pro team? I think it's a really good idea for NRG. I think it's good for Musty. Um, subs never really get used in competitive Rocket League anyway. So it's not even, it's not that much of a deal. I mean, I guess in the online Rocket League world, you could make the case that maybe NRG are taking a risk because they could need to use Musty at some point if, um, like, you know, one of the team's internet was dead. But, I mean, if I was a professional Rocket League player, I would be getting two internet connections, like just back that thing up, you know, just get multiple internets. But I mean, for Musty, it's just content. For NRG, it's content. They're really just probably thinking about the content because they, they both get content out of this. The pro team probably gets a bit more exposure from Musty's uh, YouTube channel. Musty probably gets a lot of content from it. So I think it's like a win-win for, for them. It makes a lot of sense to me. I heard a lot of the bubble scene were salty. Um, I don't know what any of the context of that was myself. I didn't really look at Twitter at all related to that, but yeah, I heard a lot of the bubble scene were salty about that. Uh, personally, I don't see why. I, I don't think there's any reason to be salty about it. What's the bubble scene? A guy on Reddit was super salty for some reason. I mean, Reddit opinions are irrelevant. It doesn't matter what anyone on Reddit says. It's irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Reddit mods were super mad. Lol. Yeah, Reddit, Reddit's a bit of a joke, but... They're, they're, like, my favorite thing about Rocket League Esports Reddit is the memes. I think they should just do memes every day. Like, that's the best part, is the memes. Some people do post some pretty interesting, like, like, stats on there as well. I like some of the stats I see on there. But whenever it comes to opinions, oh man, do I see some dumb opinions on the Reddit. Holy cow. I don't know, there, were, there was like two threads I remember. One of them was like, what's the thing you... I don't even remember the exact title, but it was like, what is the thing you hate most about the Rock League community? I don't know. What's the thing that you think is the most overrated in the Rock League community? And then there was another post like, so what's, what do you think is the most underrated? And obviously the overrated one gets like five times more upvotes. So I was like, well, there you go. That's the... This is the community right there. The thing about the what's most overrated gets way more posts and way more interest because people are just more interested in that kind of... Uh, reading. But yeah, like I said, there's some good memes on there, there's some good people like posting interesting stats on there. It's just when it comes to negativity and like posts and comments that really have no gain in them for anyone. I'm reading this and I'm thinking nobody gains from this. This is so pointless. This only brings negativity to the subreddit, negativity to the community, and it's just like left to sit there or even like praised in some cases like, wow, such a brave take. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's just negative. This is dumb. Mod's sleeping over here. I'm not even someone who's big on the, the timeouts and the bans and stuff. I mean, I don't really... I'd say my Twitch chat's pretty lenient. 
outside of tournament streams where you just have to time out more stuff because there's just comments flying flying around everywhere but in general you just like you know just talk to people who have silly opinions i'm not just one of these people who's like only positivity vi only positive vibes wow if somebody says they don't like me ban them like if people don't like me that's fine i don't really mind but it's when you know when there's like comments that are just completely unchecked and posts that are just completely left alone that have no gain there's not a win for anyone attached to it i'm just like what is going on here what are they doing do i know if first killer's done with ones i think he's taking a break until this season of rlcs is over um not 100 sure how good is mile mile is a very very good player uh i think he's got potential to be on a very good rlcs team Dustin Farky think he can go pro? I mean, he, he, he literally made like what top 16 in a regional, so yeah. I think what's holding Farky back is mostly his. The, the How hard it is to work with him sometimes. I think he makes it quite difficult for people to work with him because he just doesn't reply to messages. I mean, I, I'm just uh, telling you guys this from personal experience. Like, <laughs> whenever I have Farky involved in something, I'm always thinking, well, I hope Farky shows up because he'll just like forget to reply or something, which is very detrimental to players who are trying to be on the come up one of the I've, I've said this on smells worth stream recently as well but one of the best things you can do for yourself as a player on the on the come up is just be professional be as easy to work with as possible because if you're really easy to work with people will like working with you and they'll want to work with you but if you're really hard to work with if you're just like a hassle to get a hold of and if you're you know ever late for stuff people are not going to give you a second chance like if they've got a list of players that they want to try out for their team and one of the guys just is late or doesn't reply He's cut immediately. They'll be like, nah, forget that. If somebody's like, and I haven't heard of any situations of Forky doing this, by the way. I'm just giving an example of something that can hinder players in general. Um, and yeah, from my experience working with Forky, I know that he can be a little bit uh, careless with not replying to messages sometimes. So if I had to guess, I think that's probably what's holding him back. It's definitely not his mechanics. It's definitely not his ability. He just has to try and be a bit easier to work with. I'm sure he'll have success. Good guy. Very, very good player. I think Dig looked pretty good right now, but I mean, maybe in the future, Valent Panda will want to take a step back and bring in like another mechanical beast. See what they can do. But right now, they look like they're competitive, so I don't see them changing anything. I mean, they also can't change anything because they're locked in with this for the rest of the season. So yeah, I bet they're, I mean, they're just going to continue to see how the season goes. Maybe decide afterwards what to do. What happened with AJ and Smug? He's, he just slept in. <laughs> he just slept in. So yeah, thankfully he's fine. I mean, that's the good thing. He, he's he's only sleeping. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him. So um, there's a couple of good Mexican players. I'm sure it's gonna continue to improve the Rock League scene in New Mexico. Thus on Aqua, I've heard about him, but I've not really seen him play personally. Um, but yeah, Ferdy is one of the hottest prospects in NA right now for 3v3. What are your plans after Corona? Will I still be on the RLCS broadcast? Uh, I don't really know, man. I'm just kind of going with the flow. Do I think my show matches are responsible for getting pros positioned to succeed? Um, I, I really don't know. You'd have to ask pros who have played in my show matches what, what, uh, what their experiences are. I don't really, I don't really ask. I don't chase people up and be like, hey, so it's been six months since your first show match. I'd like you to fill in this survey about how your experience after we've been. I, I, I just don't really ask. <laughs> so you'd, you'd have to ask uh, players what they think.